the Hangouts Live. All right, Becky Stern, thank you for joining me here again and talking with me about your, your projects. Well, this is kind of like a more of a meta project for you, right? We're talking yeah. about uh, Tinkercad circuits and specifically uh, your new effort to get Arduino circuits and lessons into the Tinkercad platform, right? Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to you about uh, a cool way you can simulate your Arduino circuits without ever actually building them. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that's that's a real it is a roadblock. I remember I remember for myself as a beginner with Arduino of like, huh, how much money do I want to lay out on this? And the intimidation of working with hardware and uh, I, <laughs> I imagine having these virtual Arduino circuits is a nice way to kind of dip your toe in and get a sense of whether or not it's something that is completely scary for you or if it's something that you will then invest some more money in and get some hardware. Yeah, it's definitely an excellent, easy way to, to like you said, dip a toe in, especially if um, you are in a, you're like a, a kid just starting out or you, you don't know where to get any of this, these hardware pieces. And it's, uh, or like somebody on Twitter recently wrote to me, like, it's a good way to like practice on the couch without making a mess and making like your roommates or your wife or family like mad. Right. Uh, and right. All Getting stuck in the couch and stuff. It's a good point because it's not just Arduino and making the LED on the Arduino blink. I remember it was like, oh, I, I kind of got the whole kit, right? And so not only am I learning Arduino for the first time, but I'm learning breadboarding for the first time. I'm learning all this stuff, which was great, but it's also that that learning curve for a bunch of stuff. If you're totally new to electronics can be a little intimidating. Agreed. And so, yeah, I mean, I've taken what I learned um, from my free Instructables Arduino class, which is, which is a very hands-on, um, hands-on type, walk through the very basic skills you need of uh, Arduino. I would say they're like the trunk of the tree. And then from there, you can learn all kinds of cool skills branching out. Um, but I've been recently working on the with the Tinkercad team on um, like sort of virtualizing those beginner lessons and then building out some more lessons that um, make it easy to understand the core concepts that you need to learn to do the basic programming and electronics, but then also have that virtualized experience where you can, um, in some cases, you can see more about what's going on because there's like an oscilloscope uh, component and a multimeter component, and they all simulate actively with your Arduino program, or even with if you don't have an Arduino, they'll simulate whatever circuit you've got going on. So um, it can make it, and, and of course, um, there's no like faulty components <laughs> in the simulator, right? So like, um, or real world or static electricity or like um, some of the things that can uh, affect your real life prototyping that before you, you, like you don't know what you don't know about why it's not working. Yeah, it's not like just like a loose connection or a burnt out LED. Yeah, I mean, you can still make that mistake where you plug the wire in like one uh, pin, one breadboard hole over from where it's supposed to go because you're working in the dark or, or you aren't like, seeing where they line up exactly and that just takes practice but you but yeah you you're saved from like oh one of my breadboard wires is bad or um that kind of thing so it's is also lowers the barrier to entry there in in some ways um yeah mm -hmm. okay and now because we're doing this live and we have a chat room i definitely want to encourage anyone who wants to ask a question to not hold back and uh ask a question because i'm i'm monitoring it here i'm going to try to do a better job of it I have it open too, so cool. yeah, I'll see it. All right, well let's uh, let's dive into it. First of all, I want to I want to mention and I have some links in the description here already for this video that point to kind of th I think three different ways to get to these lessons, right? There's there's the lessons within uh, Tinkercad. There's the YouTube videos that are um, I think that are linked to as like a Tinkercad. Um, playlist of videos on YouTube. And mm -hmm. then there's also the Instructables way to get into this content too, right? Correct. So, I mean, you know me, I'm just going to run screen right now. And um, I'm, I've built some basic um, Arduino examples from within Tinkercad. So Tinkercad's a free um, web-based platform. You just need to sign in in a free account to, um, to access these lessons. So once you're in 
Tinkercad, you go to the learning page and you can navigate to these uh, beginner Arduino lessons. And what's cool about this way of seeing the uh, of learning the basic Arduino lessons is that you have a, the simulator and uh, work plane window like editor right here. And then the lesson is happening in the left hand panel next to it. And it's um, going to guide you through every every step that you need to do and tell you like where to find components to drag out. And for instance, like open up the code panel and you can look at either the blocks version of the code, scratch blocks, or you can also expand it to see um, the basic Arduino code that goes with it. But this is a fully functional version of the editor right here with uh, all these explanations right next door. So that's uh, really fun for like a classroom experience or, or fully immersive interactive. Um, situation, but you can also uh, go to the if you don't want to log in anything. There's a publicly available version of these, or or you just happen to already be on Instructables. You can go to the Circuits user on Instructables. It's just um, Instructables.com/slash/members/slash/Circuits, and or if you search for Tinkercad Arduino, you should find you should find these lessons. And so they're just like the same lesson content, but sort of um, with maybe a few. Uh, like the, the pictures are just bigger and more spread out. And um, there's also a video lesson with my little face teaching you how, all of the concepts and like animated GIFs. And then they also have the, an embedded version of the circuit here. So um, that's another way that you can really uh, dig into this. And, and I go along and I like to make sure that folks are understanding the relationship between the physical version of the the circuit and the digital, the simulated version of the circuit, just so that you can expand your skills into the physical realm when you're ready to, and, and the, uh, you, you're not lost between the two systems. But um, yeah, and then these videos, yeah, they're on the Tinkercad YouTube channel as well, um, and in the playlist. So if you wanted to go check those out, you can find the embed here, or oops, I'm like making windows all big. Anyway. There's, there's a Becky, there's a Becky and the Becky there. Um, <laughs> Inception. I think you, you've, there's two things I wanna go back and, and touch on here. One is that there's that code and block view on the on the the panel there for the the Tinkercad circuit, and I think that's really cool, and it's something I would have really valued as a beginner um, to have access to. And maybe we can talk about that. The other thing I want to talk, or maybe I can just mention real quick here because it's just a, a mention, is this idea that this content and this platform is great for. I imagine it's great for classroom scenarios where you might not have the 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 budget or the uh, or want to invite the complexity of outfitting a classroom of 30 people with uh, Arduinos and breadboards and hardware, but you can actually get people to understand some of the concepts just with a uh, a web browser. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely that's one of the main appeals is that uh, you can have all of your students in, in a classroom using these lessons at the same time and having their own simulator. And then, I mean, it saves time too. Like a lot of teachers complain that they ha only have a short block of time with their students and this will help you get up and running uh, more quickly. You can save like multiple versions of your, of your um, circuit so that like, instead of having to sit there and like change the wiring to express other code that you've saved with the one Arduino you have, you can have as many Arduinos as you want uh, running different code and swap between them really quickly. Right, so then the, the headache just becomes getting accounts for all the different kids in your class, probably. Yes, or, and Tinkercad has people. Tinkercad. I'm not the total expert authority on this, but the but Tinkercad does have teacher um, like account administration tools for for students, like where students sign up with their teacher code. If you go to Tinkercad.com/teach, there'll be some more information about um, how you can get a class. But we do have some classroom tools, yeah. Cool, and that's good for I imagine any kind of makers maybe doing an Arduino class this summer. Uh, that might be another tool that they can make available to themselves. Yes, uh, it's a great over the summer project to <laughs> learn the beginner Arduino. Right, and as you're making more content for them too, more more content for them to use. Um, that code block thing, I want to talk about that because okay, I, I can I go think, back to it. I think the way it's done is really neat, and uh, I think it's cool that there's more than one way to both visualize your project and also even build projects, right? You can actually build using that code interface too. It's like a scratch style interface. Yeah, exactly. So um, so when you're looking at like pre-built circuits here, and I, I mean, I can mess around with this circuit and show you how you might change it. But um, the, yeah, it's scratch blocks, which uh, can interface with any kind of programming. Um, and we have it hooked up to Arduino here. So the code, the code blocks are actually generating this Arduino code over. So
in blocks code mode, you can't actually directly edit the text because it's, it's not, not necessarily backwards compatible with the blocks. Um, so you edit in the blocks and you can see either just the blocks or all the blocks and the Arduino code. And then you could also convert, um, If let me go over to a different one. If you go over to um, text mode, it'll give you a warning that you're about to throw away your blocks and it'll just swap in the, uh, the regular Arduino code, which then you can edit uh, directly. So if you start a new one, you can start out with just the text editor and just throw your Arduino code in there. And it supports included libraries and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's pretty neat. So in this program, for instance, let me show you what it is. It's an ultrasonic distance sensor and three LEDs. And when I click start simulation, the parts become active. So um, I have my basic blocks code here sets a distance threshold to a number of centimeters and then reads the analog distance, uh, the analog distance sensor here. And uh, or rather, it's this is a digital uh, distance sensor, pardon me, and mm -hmm. then uh, converts that converts it to inches. So you can see on the serial monitor, the live output in centimeters and inches. That's what these blue blocks are here. And then it uses a simple if statement. So uh, if folks like are learning about computing logic, blocks are a really easy way to understand like what's happening because the color coding like sort of shows you what's contained within each if statement. So um, it's just checking to see if the distance is less than the threshold. And if it is light up, uh, one of the LEDs to start, which, so this is a basic like proximity alarm. You can see when I go a little close, one LED will turn on and then it says if the distance threshold is is between, if the distance is between the threshold and a little bit more than the threshold or less than the threshold in this case, because it's about it being closer, it'll light up more of the LEDs. And so you can really play around with your circuit um, in the ideal situation. And then I could even use this as my circuit diagram to go forth and build my physical circuit and then either just uh, like select all of this and copy and paste or click this download button uh, to have it download my Arduino code. I open it up in my Arduino software and um, hit program on my physical board. So it's really ex uh, nice to be able to extend it beyond the beyond the physical interface and or the virtual interface into your physical circuits. But uh, if you just stay right here, I think you get like 85% of the satisfaction. Right, and then by default, and correct me if I'm wrong, like the block, inter like the scratch style interface comes up, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah but I, I think you need to just switch over. So like here, I'll just show you how to create a new, a new one. And I there's a cool thing here about the Arduino starters. Um, but if I so if I just choose a basic Arduino board, um, the code that comes on it is the same code that comes from the factory, which is the blink sketch. And yes, it is blocks by default. Um, but you can just switch it over to text and then uh, paste in any of your current Arduino code you're working on right here. Yeah, and it's no criticism. I think the blocks by default is a, is a great way to go for probably the beginner target for this uh, the, for this site. Yeah, so, the target, I mean, yes, the Tinkercad uh, audience these days, right, is it's a program for beginners and kids. So we really wanna lower the, I think this like it lowers the age of the barrier to entry to Arduino stuff, both with the virtual environment, which makes it, um, all kids know how to use virtual things now, right? Like, um, and then uh, the like the blocks code and the virtual simulation make it so that I think younger younger and younger kids could start out doing this. But that's not to exclude makers and hobbyists. Um, it's definitely not like a meant to be a, f a fully f f like it's it's not a um, if, if you want to design a circuit board like use Eagle. <laughs> this is for <laughs> it, it's for um, yeah. quick sketching and for learning and and for um, mocking up your ideas. Cause you can use a lot of stand in parts. Like it's, it's not a huge parts library and that's on purpose. So you don't feel overwhelmed. And, and also because a lot of parts will function as generic versions of all kinds of parts, right? Like a temperature sensor will work like any analog um, variable voltage, variable resistance sensor. So you can use it if we don't have the part that you want in Tinkercad, you could yeah. use but a I different one. There's also, there's an in-between uh, audience like me who has, like played around with a lot of the beginner example sketches uh, for Arduino, but also kind of mostly searched for what I needed to get out of it immediately and not gone back and really uh, paid attention to and understood how those example sketches work. I'm interested in going in using a few of these and actually taking a look at how the block example code explains some of these example uh, sketches that I may have either glossed over or just didn't immediately seem uh, graspable by code. Uh, I think it's an, it's another it's, an, it's a useful other window into some of the different 
uh, ways that Arduino can be used that you know, I haven't really pulled back the cloth on. Sure, and, uh, I mean, it, it helps you sort of organize the, the structure of the text Arduino code, right? Which can look really intimidating to some people. And if you're dyslexic like me, the characters sometimes like to dance around. And so the um, <laughs> to simplify it down and to have um, more than one way to represent the same information helps different types of learners grasp it in a different way, right? So I'm like a really visual learner and um, an experiential learner. And so uh, whenever I make tutorials, I make tutorials for people like me who need the text, the photos, and the video in order to understand because they all approach it from a different a different angle. And so the idea that you can directly compare the blocks to the um, Arduino code, just like you said, will give you a deeper understanding probably more quickly of the overall logic that's happening there because you do there is a, a learning curve in learning how to think like a programmer if you're just learning uh, all of this logic stuff. For sure, yeah, and I think that it, especially since Scratch is already so has made such an inroad for curriculum for kids, I think being able to tie that to the code this way is is pretty smart. Yeah, and for me, like this, the, you got your three ways: you have your Scratch blocks, you have your Arduino text, and then you have like the physical, uh, rep or the you know the virtual representation of the board, the illustration they're animating, or you can see the motor spinning, or I can touch the button and see the LED turn on. That's like a a really good you know, physical manifestation of that code, as opposed to like when I was learning basic uh, in my very first programming class and we had to make like a snake game. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's visual, but it's not that tactile experience of really understanding where the electricity is going to create this experience. So um, I found that really enchanting when I first learned about microcontrollers and uh, became much more interested in programming because microcontrollers were so much more fun than writing Photoshop filters or whatever else I had tried. All right, and now there's other circuits beyond the Arduino circuits that you've been helping to uh, build the curriculum for here too, right? I, I know circuits have been around for a little while, uh, but what other kinds of circuits can users dive into if this is totally new to them? Just about anything, like the product legacy here, uh, the product used to be called circuits.io originally, and then was like moved into the 123D suite, and then it was its own thing, Autodesk circuits, and now it's inside Tinkercad circuits. So um, it has changed a little bit during those different transitions, like it, it uh, but it still can create um, uh, create board files for you, I think. You can download, you can export a, um, yeah, an Eagle board file and then like continue your work on your project in Eagle if you want to. So you can use it to, um, like if you wanted to design an Arduino shield, you could start in the Tinkercad circuits, for example. But beyond Arduino, yeah, that does all kinds of, um, of analog um, synthesis, synthesis, no, uh, simulation. Yeah, of, uh, there's a, let me just show you the parts in the, uh, let me go back to my, my application window. If you go into the parts drawer and you open up all the parts, can you see my screen now? Mm -hmm. uh, and you scroll down here, you can see that in addition to like, you got your NeoPixels and your motors and all that kind of stuff, you start to see the in, the integrated circuits drawer is kind of big. You have 555 timer and op amp and compared to an opto coupler and um, lots of different solid state components that you could use to build all of your classic like, uh, Simon Monk and um, et cetera type analog circuitry. And then you just hit simulate and it'll you know, um, do all of the fun stuff. So um, yeah, like you can do any, you can do anything with it. I just happen to be amping up their Arduino tutorials right now because that's a, that's a, a spot where um, there's an opportunity there for like classroom curriculum stuff. And, um, but like, yeah, you can do, I think it's it's for a bunch of different like types of makers, right? Whether you're a kid or a beginner Arduino or a classic just pulled out those old Radio Shack manuals and wanna like learn about the stuff from the logic, from the solid state end of things too. Right, the, the Charles Platt uh, getting started with electronics end of things. Yeah, 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 so you could take a lot of lessons you find online such as, Char yeah, or in Charles Platt's book um, and um, execute them using Tinkercad circuits instead of buying the components to start out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And is there a particular project we should all be aware of, or anything that you want to point people to? Oh yeah, you're you're teasing the thing that I want that I mentioned. I wanted to show people. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Donald remembers what we wanted to talk about. Okay, I did a project I thought was was a a cool use of Tinkercad circuits. It's my 
It's my GH5 foot pedal shutter remote. So the these Panasonic Lumix cameras, but the GH3, the GH4, the GH5, they all use the same remote, but it has some uh, resistors inside it. And so if you wanna make your own, um, you have to have the right values of resistors or find them. And so I uh, was digging around in my resistor drawer and I, I was trying to test and see what resistors were gonna work for um, this build. And like, you don't have to have the exact resistors that they show you in the, um, let me go back to my circuit, that they show you in the whatever diagram I found online, you can add, you can add resistors together. And um, so you can kind of work with what you have and they'll add together in series or whatever. So without any code or anything, I just have a, a button and, and resistors attached to this multimeter component. And so I knew the target voltage or the target resistance for the act shutter activation um, resistor. And, and so, or, you know, that it was supposed to be. And so I could see what I had to change these resistors virtually and then hit simulate to see what the resulting resist resistance was because it didn't have to be exact either. It was, it would trigger the shutter if it was in a certain range of the target resistance. So that helped me sort of um, dig through my pile of resistors. Here's like, you can see that I made three of these and put them next to each other. And you can see like, they're all pretty close to the same resistance. And these were all combinations that worked when I tried them on my physical breadboard to trigger the camera shutter. And so I think this is, an, and I was also able to showcase this version of the circuit in the tutorial video that I made for this project, which I think really helped to communicate like what was really going on in the circuit for folks who uh, because folks who might want to build this might have zero electronics knowledge because um, it's not a very hard project and uh, but there's a high people will want it really bad if they if they want it if they want a foot pedal switch they'll go to great lengths to try to build it themselves um do you know what i'm saying like when, yeah, um, yeah. people ha yeah so uh, i i think it could be useful for um anybody who does anything with wiring to as a circuit diagramming situation but also the simulation, I think, adds uh, such an interesting layer for demonstrating purposes and for screencasts. So uh, I'm really excited to play with it some more um, in tutorials as a way to like explain the electronics portion of a project. Yeah, because I, Fritzing has been such a useful tool for diagramming, especially if there's some kind of cataloged element uh, from SparkFun or something that you want to import in and have it look right. But you don't really get the simulation aspect of it to, to demonstrate the circuit or how things are are working in a in an animated virtual sense the way that the circuits seems to be able to do. Yeah, which is I think a really cool teaching tool. Nothing against fritzing. I also love fritzing. <laughs> so it's a wonderful time to be alive, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back and Edward in the comments is like, back in my day, <laughs> I was teaching 20 librarians with Where water. was this tool? Yeah. <laughs> well, back back in my day, we used uh, pick chips and we had to use a programmer that was like several hundred dollars and a compiler that was like several hundred dollars. Uh, it was such a pain. Well, it's, it's a good, like I said, it's a good time to be around. I'm glad these tools are out there and I'm glad that you're helping develop cool content uh, to, to make these make these great so people can find this stuff on uh tinkercad circuits right um tell us tell me again remind everybody where they can find the content you can find them when you're logged into tinkercad on the learning page there uh just navigate through circuits to arduino uh you can find them on the circuit uh tinkercad circuits instructables page which you can just search for arduino tinkercad on google and you'll find some of those are already coming up um, you can find the videos embedded in those instructables or on the Tinkercad YouTube channel. And um, I think those are the three places you can find those. And then I've been making some projects on, you know, on my instructables, uh, projects that sometimes use circuits, such as the one I just showed you with the foot pedal switch. All right. It's, it's, uh, it's great. Thank you for spending some time on your Friday here to give us the demo and the, the download, Becky. My pleasure, as always, Donald. All right, and uh, uh, yeah, if you want to stick around for a little bit, we'll see if there's any other uh, questions in the in the chat room here. And it's just Edward saying, "Back in my day, and get off my lawn." <laughs> <laughs> I'm editorializing. I'm so, right. sorry. I'm glad you showed up, Edward. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he wants you off the lawn. He's just <laughs> remarking about how cool the tool is. That's all. All right. Well, 
Thanks again for joining me, Becky. Have a great rest of your Friday. Am I going to see you at Maker Fair or are you, you sticking it around in New York? No, I, I'll see. Like, if you come to Maker Fair New York, then I will see you. Yeah, hey, I'm planning um, on it. I, I like my knees are really bad and I just don't travel because of it very much, right? Like if I have to save my my chips, doctors say I have a finite number of stairs <laughs> left on my knees. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's, uh, it's not because I don't want to be there. I just, it really uh, takes a lot out of my day or my, you know, my life, big chunk out of my life to go to events that involve travel. So um, it is with my regrets. I send my love and I hope, uh, you know, you can say hi to people on my behalf. All right, you know, I'll if do you that. don't mind, from within your power racing wheels helmet. <laughs> I ordered a new one today. Oh, good. But you should always have fresh motorcycle helmet when you're doing something um, dangerous like that, because the old ones they go bad, you know. And if you drop it, then the foam can crack, and you don't know. Well, mostly I just did it out of my own selfish need to make sure that uh, we save time on switching helmets during like the relay races, and uh, that was that was a real oh, time. Oh, wow, that. nice. Yeah, uh huh. I see. Shaving down seconds, really mm -hmm. optimizing. Mm. It's true. All right. Enough, enough power racing talk. Uh, but I'll, I'll talk to you later, Becky. Thanks again. My pleasure.